That's the vibe I'm getting. All right. Got it. We're recording, folks. If you don't want to be on the video, go ahead and mute your video right now. Uh, today, we are talking about Zotero. If I share my screen. Hey, there we go. You guys can see okay? Great. Uh, so my subtitle, Swiss Army Knife of Research Tools. I really, really love Zotero. It is, it is much, much more than just a citation generator. There's... Um, there's so many different things it can do. And if you talk to 10 different people, they might be using it in 10 different ways. Uh, I think it's a really, really handy thing to know about. Uh, I might sound a little bit like an advertisement for Zotero today, um, but I think I think that is with good reason. I think it's actually quite easy to use. That's the main message I want you guys to, to, to get today. Um, and so I think the biggest impediment to use to using it is to just being told and reassured that it is that it's quite easy to use. Um, so we'll start with the fact that it, uh, it's gonna work across 99% of your setups. So if you are using any of the uh, operating systems on the left or any of the browsers on the right, this is something that is gonna work right out of the box for you. Um, and if even if you are an outlier and you use something different than this, there's always a way to get it to work. Um, but if this is you anywhere on this page, uh, you are going to be fine right out of the box. Uh, the reason for that is that this is this is an open source software. Um, so it's free in a couple ways that might be familiar to some of you. Uh, it's free as in it doesn't cost any money. So Zotero, it, there's no fee to download it initially. You're never going to get a monthly fee. It's just yours. Um, you will put a copy on your machine and that copy is yours and no one can mess with it. Um, it's also free for people who have the technical skills to modify it, um, which means there's a lot of really cool plugins and add-ons and things that go with it. Um, I love that it's not monetizing our data, right? This There is no corporation, there's no large um, profit-making entity behind Zotero. Um, that's one of the reasons I sound like an advertisement with it. There's no advertising dollars associated with Zotero. We have to just tell each other uh, when we find something that's good. Um, and I'm here to tell you, I do use Zotero and I do think it is, it's excellent. Um, the, there's a, rabbit is the wrong word, but there's a dedicated community of Zotero users behind it, which, um, which means that if you do have a question, it is really easy to find the answer online, their documentation. It's thorough, it is succinct, it's very easy to use. And then if you need help beyond that, the people on the forums are lovely. Um, and I just added this last uh, bullet point, it's billionaire proof, right? Like nobody can buy Zotero and then torpedo it. Nobody is ever gonna cut Zotero because it wasn't making enough money. It's not making any money. Right? Um, so Kristen, where can I get Zotero? Uh, you just go to zotero.org. Right. This this is not a screenshot of that page. When you go to Zotero.org, there's just one download button. Um, just hit that button. It's this easy. Um, it is automatically going to detect what operating system you're using and what browser you're in. So for me, it shows that I recognize that Aunt Kristen's using Windows and I see she's using the Firefox browser. And then it gives me two pieces to download. So there's really two pieces you want. Um, for Zotero to work the, the best. One is a desktop app. That's what this one on the left is. Um, that is a something that lives on your computer, little icon on your desktop. You, it's, you can open it up when you're offline, it's, it's yours. And the other piece, the one on the right, is a little plugin that lives in your browser. It's gonna put a little button, probably on the upper right, depending on your browser, but probably the upper right of your browser that is the way that when you're cruising around the web and you see something and you want to send it to your desktop app, you hit the little button and it goes right in. Um, so yeah, the download process is pretty easy, but do do get both pieces. Um, and the setup, Hannah Mallon reminded me, uh, don't worry about the the settings or the default. Just the default settings are fine and you can change everything later, right? It's It's not a lifelong commitment. You can just jump in with the defaults and then if there's things you want to change i promise you we will be able to sort out how to change them yeah so i think it's time for us to do a little live demo i'm going to show you guys my zotero here now we are looking at my desktop app okay 
I've got, you can see on the far left column, I've got a set of folders. This is my library. These are my collections. Um, if I want to, I shouldn't close that. If I want to show you um, a collection, I could open one up. Uh, and then if I click on it on the left, the middle column becomes the individual items in that collection. So now I can see that whole list. And then if I want to go further, um, I can see individual item metadata on the far right. So if I select an item, so it's always going to look like these three columns, you've got your folders and your lists, and then your data. Um, this is all editable. You want to change something, you just click right in or add information. It's very easy to use. So should we add something? I think we should. Uh, let's say for today, I'm going to add things to this demo collection. So the first thing you do when you want to start um, working in Zotero, you make sure your desktop app is open. And then you make sure you've highlighted the collection where you want things to go. So right now I want it to go in the, the demo collection. Then I can go back to my browser. Um, and here, let me show you the button. In the upper right, for me, it's here in Firefox, this little uh, piece of paper. The icon for saving things actually changes depending on what you're saving. Wait, 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 I've got a picture. Where is it? This is the handout, by the way, you guys will have links to this handout as well. Um, so if I were on a page with a book, my icon would look like a book. If my icon, if I were on a page with a video, it might look a little different. But if you hover over it, if you forget what it looks like, just hover and it says, oh, hey, this is the save to Zotero button. Well, let's say I am in uh, the library catalog, as I often am, and I find a book that I want to add to Zotero. This is my favorite part. I just go up to my save button. You can see in the little window that opens up, it's saving it to that collection, Zotero demo collection that I selected in, in the app. And now if we go, oh, I gotta move this picture. Now, if we go back to my Zotero, you can see in that collection, here's the book and here's the metadata, right? This is usually the point at which people are like, Oh, like the light bulb goes off and they say, I understand why this thing is so is so handy because one click, it's done a pretty good job of the metadata. Sorry, I'm trying to move my picture. It's, it's getting mine. Um, but again, if there were any errors, it would be no trouble to just go in and edit it. Um, so maybe you're not so impressed because of course, library catalogs have great metadata. What if I'm somewhere else? What if I am on... Uh, a publisher website. So here's another, here's an example of an article. Now you'll see my icon looks a little different or it was a book, now it's a page. I just click that and it's saving it. Let's go peek at our metadata again. Looks pretty good. It captured the volume and the issue number. Then again, that's really not that hard to. A lot of publisher, journal publisher websites have pretty decent metadata as well. Um, what else? Oh, you can do it from inside. This is an article from the library database. I think I'm an academic search premier. Again, you just hit the, this. It's that easy. Right? And you're just collecting these items. Um, I do want to show as an example, here's a, here's a website that isn't necessarily designed to work um, with bibliographic management software, right? This is just a podcast. Um, but the button is still there. It's recognizing a web page and it's going to do its best to pull the metadata from the web page. But it might be a little wonky. Let's let's see how this one came out. Yep. So there's a podcast web page. It's got the word podcast in the title, right? So this probably needs a little bit of massaging to make it to make it look good, but it's it's no trouble to do it, right? Oop, I've I've spelled his name right. Don't don't tell him. I'm spelling it somewhere. Um, great. So, okay, now we've got a little collection going. Let's say that we are ready to start um, citing some stuff and working with it in, let's say, a Word document. There's a variety of ways to move your citations. Uh, if I want to cite this book, one thing I can do is just click and drag from my desktop app over to any word processing feature. Oh, I like I like the reaction faces I got on that one. Yeah, so it's uh, my default setting is APA, but there are many, many settings you can do. So you can do click and drag. If you want to do more than one at a time, 
in your desktop app, you can highlight more than one by holding down the shift key. Uh, you can click and drag these. The other option is to right click in the desktop app and you see there's this option to create bibliography from whichever items you've highlighted. Again, now it's, now it's asking me, do you still want APA? I say, yes, I do. It's copied them to my clipboard. So if I want to put them in my document, I just paste them in. So easy to use. Um, what else, what else should I show you guys? Um, a lot of folks use the tagging feature in Zotero. I, I'm more of a, a collections and folders person, but sometimes people use both. So within any individual item in the desktop app, you can click on, click on it, go over to tags and start tagging. And then once you've built up a lot of tags, you can filter your collection. Um, I've seen people use this, you know, they'll do subject collections and they'll tag stuff like, uh, I've read this or I have unread, or this is for this paper or that project. They can tag them in a variety of ways. Um, and then the last uh, really excellent feature, I shouldn't say last, there's, there's so many, um, but it's, it's possible to make, um, to share the items that you've found or to build collections together with groups. Um, and up here, these little icons, this is for creating a new group. Uh, I'm not going to walk through this now because it's a little bit more involved, but you have options as far as making groups. I could make a group with just the people in this session, and we could make it so that only we can see our collection and only we can edit it. We could make a public group where our collection might be publicly visible, but only we edit it. Or you could really go all in and make a collection that is editable by the public and visible to the public if you really want to go uh, full scale collaborative on something like that. All right, let's head back here. Um, the handout has links um, to the quick start guide and then the full documentation. I swear, like this is all you will need to get up and running on this. And then there's some quick notes here about the, um, the different features. I just want you to know what it's possible to do because once you know what it's possible to do, then you can go search for the nitty gritty on how to do it. Um, it really is quite easy to do. Uh, and then there's just a little, oh man, keep moving this. Um, a little note here, Zotero has another smaller application. I mean, I think for, for grad students, for faculty, um, potentially for seniors working on significant projects, the full Zotero is absolutely the way to go. If you happen to be working with a group of undergrads and really for them, all they just need is a citation generator. Um, I just wanted to share with folks to be aware of something called a ZBib. It's like the really lightweight version of Zotero where you can go and you can search for uh, existing bibliographic information about a book. Um, or journal, or I mean, all of the formats are in there. There's really quite a, quite a few things in here. Um, and it can manually generate, it can automatically generate citations in a variety of formats. Um, and it, it's saving a list actually using cookies on your browser. So if students do want to use this to make one bibliography, as long as they don't clear their cookies, they can come back on another day and their sources will still be there. Um, Zotero and, and ZBib, they come with all the same caveats that any you know, reference manager has, which is that, yeah, sometimes it's gonna get that capitalization wrong. Sometimes there's gonna be little things that, that you, the students and, and we, you know, need to understand citation well enough to correct in the context that require it. Um, but really it, do, it does a pretty good job. Uh, the last thing, oh, one minute to go. This is excellent. I want to share with you that if after this you are sold on Zotero, but you're not quite comfortable jumping in on your own, first week in October, we are going to have two workshops, one on Monday, one on Thursday. Anyone is welcome, students, faculty, staff, anybody, just bring your laptop um, and we'll get you set up. We'll work through some stuff together. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And uh, Kristen will stick around if you have any questions. Otherwise, we'll see you for the next one.